You have failed the city. This is the Arrow Review for episode 16. What's up guys, Kedrick's back again, and oh man, new episode of Arrow, pretty cool. So, uh, okay, so not as much hype for this episode as there was for Flash yesterday, but we're sticking to Arrow mainly on this one. So yeah, standard uh, opening, and before we go any further, spoilers for the episode, if you've not seen it, go watch the episode, then come back and listen to this. So, wow, so pretty good episode. A lot of suspense in this episode. It really held up. The action was good. Gotta say, I love this. So we start off with Oliver, Diggle, and Merlin. They're all still in the... Hold on, this is driving me nuts. This, oh, you're getting, is that, you're not getting the hand motions. Anyway, so we got Oliver, Merlin, Diggle. They're all still in whatever that place is called. Uh, Ra's al Ghul or Ra's al Ghul's fortress. And... We got what we got at the end of the last episode. Ra's al Ghul wants Oliver Queen to be the next head of the League of Assassins. Now, that is a pretty big deal. And he even told Oliver that he could lead the Assassins however he wanted to. That he could tell them to give up their killing ways and they would do it. Now... On an immediate note, I would probably have said yes myself. But there's also a lot of downside to that because you don't really know what's always going on in Ra's al Ghul's head. You don't know why he does what he does sometimes. And, wow. So, yeah. This is pretty much following the comic book story of uh, of the Batman with, with this Ra's al Ghul story. Except in there, it's, you know, it's Talia al Ghul, not uh, Nissa al Ghul. And it pretty much went the same way that it did in the Batman comic books that it did here in the show. So that's kind of where this is going. And it's just such a good show sometimes. And you really start to get into what's going on through Oliver's head. Ra's al Ghul predicted that his friends would turn on him, that he would be alone. And, no, I just figured, you know, the entire time I was just thinking back to Spider-Man 1. Despite everything you've done for them, eventually they will hate you. And I'm just like, yeah, that's, it, it kind of sounds like that. And it's just kind of nostalgic in a way like that. And I think this is what they're going for. They want everyone to remember that Oliver needs to persevere through all this. And there's a lot that's going on here. The, uh, first off, we got the Captain Adam suit. It's still being, you know, built up. We've seen it one time in flight mode but we haven't seen it in action or anything like that so you know there's still a little bit to go on there and I, don't know, I mean apparently the suit might not be done yet so you know it's still going okay so we got the pretty much obvious we got Oliver dealing with the idea of him becoming the next Ray Shao Ghul or Raza Ghul whatever and it's just you can really see the turmoil that's going through his head with this unbelievable episode and it's just so wow there's just so much going on here I, I could probably just geek out about this episode all day or all night I guess <laughs> but it, it just really comes down to this one fact that Oliver does not realize what good he does you know it, I'm probably going to get in trouble for this, but uh, the basic uh, justice is blind theory. You know, you can't always see what you're doing. And it's just so, you know, this, that's the case here. Oliver doesn't see all the good that he's been doing until the near end of the episode. And that's just the, the lesson and the beauty. I mean, you kind of see it coming the entire time. And the relationship between him and Felicity is really turning into something more. And then we got everything that's going on with Oliver's sister, Thea. And it's just all over the place because of Malcolm Merlin. Gotta say, kind of in the same boat as her when she's saying that she's think that she's already imagined herself stabbing him in the neck seven times and snapping his neck at least twice. So, I mean, I can kind of understand that. I've been in that boat where I wanted to just go... Hurr! You wanna mess with me again? 
And it's just such a, I mean, you can really relate to that. And I messed with the camera a little bit. But, um, man, it's just such a good feeling with this episode when you can truly emphasize what the characters are feeling. At times, though, in the episode, it felt like it was going a little much. There were slight moments where I was thinking to myself, there's not really anyone who would act like this in this kind of situation where Oliver's making it painstakingly clear that he's going through something. And that's a bit of a letdown when it comes down to acting, when you make it too obvious. But, you know, then again, this is TV, and, you know, they're really trying to connect it with the audience. But I think just uh, maybe keeping him kind of a little more quiet than usual, just kind of maybe going on an obsessed with work group kind of deal. But they play it out in a way where it actually goes pretty well. And then we got the end scene where he finally turns down Raish's offer and says it's not up for debate and that it's just not going to happen. So I thought that was pretty cool. And then we got the big fight scene in the police station, which I thought was unbelievably amazing. I mean, we had Arrow, we had Nyssa, we had Arsenal, and we had Laurel. I mean, I mean, there's just so much going on with, you know, the tension that's already going on between the te- uh, Captain Lance, not Detective Lance. It's Captain now, not Detective. Man, it's just so unbelievable. And there's just a lot to be said there. The fact that Oliver is still taking the lessons that Felicity have, has given him. Because surprisingly, even with her awkward quirkiness sometimes, she does manage to throw out those wise words of wisdom. And that's just something that's pretty cool. I kind of feel like she might be thinking about... I don't know if she and Ray are actually... a Thing, but if she, if they are, I mean, she's kind of thinking about dip, about going out with Oliver and all that. I mean, there's just, it's all over the place. Anyway, and then we got the, the Roy and Thea thing at the end of the episode where I'm just like, oh, I see a kissing scene coming on. And then they just keep doing it. I'm like, yeah, Roy, that's my man there. Okay, so good episode all in all. The preview for the next episode, pretty good. Uh, I, I, it wasn't as dramatic as I thought it would be, but it was still pretty good. Oh, and one last thing. Ray Shock Gull pretending to be the Arrow. I mean, I was expecting just one of the, uh, the random assassins or maybe... I can't remember the, Je- the Chinese guy that we've been seeing in all the flashbacks. I had no problem with his name. Before the mid-season finale, now I can't remember for life of me, but you guys get the idea. It's going pretty well for the show, so... I lost my train of thought for a second. Okay, time for the overall verdict. Action, good, story, really good. Uh, The way they played it out, eh, for the most part, good. So, all in all, I think I'm going to give this episode a, let's see, what's a good idea? You know what, I'm I'm going to give this one an 8 out of 10. It was pretty good, had some stuff that it could be worked on. Uh, you know, hopefully the next episode will be better next week. Episode 16, pretty good, liked it. I think Flash took the episode this week, but, you know, only time will tell whenever Arrow's going to come back you know, to be in, you know, the top. So, like, share, comment, subscribe. If you haven't done so, you can leave me a like. Oh, not just like. Oh, uh, I was going somewhere. Oh, yeah, leave me a comment below over a reaction that you would like me to do, and I will most likely do it if it's nothing inappropriate. I mean, I'm trying to keep this, say, like a PG-13 kind of-ish thing going on here. I don't know. Okay, so I've been Kedricks, and as always, people, have an awesome day. Peace out.